So this is the um, back axle. So it's a kind of similar design as you've seen on my big truck and my smaller truck. If I've actually made any videos of the big truck, which I can't remember now. So this is a very small design. It's completely different from the blue truck axle and it actually works for an extended period of time. So instead of using a big um, like brake disc style mounting system, this has actually got a blocker here, which is the same diameter of the axle when it focuses, there we go. Um, and that stops the half shaft from being able to snap. And then there's this plate here with a screw through it. And so the inside there's a square which the wheel mounts directly onto. And then it's held on so it can't move. Well it can move a little bit side to side but that's not too much of a problem. And it's just got a standard-ish design of mine um, spur gear mount. But it doesn't have the second block which the other ones do. And because the geariness is bigger. So this has I think a rate, I think it's about 8 to 14 or something, so it's almost 2 to 1 um, reduction. And so that's got some small bolts in it, so it's quite thin as well, so it is slightly flexible. So on these, this bolt here, and on this bolt here, that's where the rear coil springs mount. So it hasn't got any shock absorbers, it's just got coil springs, which will be something that changes. So this is the motor and ESC assembly, which is very different to my older models. Because usually you have the motor mounted somewhere, with a gear on it, then another gear mounted directly to the chassis with the ESC all hidden away somewhere else. But what this model does is got the motor in there, which is obviously the same 920 as it said earlier. And also, make it a bit lighter for you, it's got a gear reduction, which is um, 2 to 1 exactly. That does come out a bit sometimes because there's a blocker plate. So also I've got this aluminium heat sink. So this heat sink is bent down to it, that goes under. So also you've got the air going through the grill, which interacts on the top half and the ESC fins. And the bottom half from under the car. Um, and it's also finned as you can see, which looks quite nice. So we're just using the standard um, T-plug or Dean's connector, I've seen it called. Um, this goes for an extension cable to the receiver which is in the back of the vehicle and the reason it's in the back of the vehicle is because I didn't have anywhere to put it in the front and also this vehicle is very front heavy because you've got a battery, motor assembly and this thing weighs a bit it's got aluminium heat sink and everything in it um, front axle, the bonnet which is heavy and so there isn't actually that much weight on the back end so it does suffer from going around these circles quite a lot so once it, when this, this actually, um, again this is another just CV joint which is the exact same one that I've used in my truck with 14mm um, diameter with two pins and these are bit, these prove to be really reliable in their new form, they rarely ever come out off so they're actually quite hard to get off but they run really smoothly and this has actually got some grease in it so everything's been greased, so the motor is greased um, and so is this um, hole here still no bearing but bit of a shame but it actually runs really smoothly so it's a bit noisy because originally the gear was going to be one size and then the teeth were the right size but then it skipped for some reason it just skipped on the other gear so I had to make the gear five percent bigger but um, I forgot to actually add another tooth in which it needs so it's a bit on the noisy side it's only when it's under load actually it's reasonably quiet compared to my other trucks when it's actually going along like um, on a flat piece of road, once it gets up to a certain speed, about 6 miles per hour, it actually begins to settle down, the noise, and it actually is quite quiet. Um, it's painted black by the way, this is not final, this is just to make it blend in a bit more with the chassis. So just use, obviously, as you can see, the um, bullet connector there, and the on-off switch, which I never use. So that's the running gear of the car, explain. So this is the body of the car. So this is all made of white filament um, underneath, which was 12.99 per kilogram on Amazon um, for one kilogram, which is pretty reasonable and it's pretty cheap. But it seems to be pretty strong. Like all the mechanics is also made from that exact same filament. So I'm pretty impressed with it. It's reasonably flexible, um, so the suspension does work, which um, is obviously useful. 
because obviously the um, swinging arms, which are under here, you can just see them there. The swinging arms obviously need to be able to flex, otherwise you won't be able to go up and down. You see, this can also articulate somewhat. It doesn't have a panard rod, which is, they really technically should do for three-link suspension, but anyways. So the wheels, they are um, chrome filament. So the chrome filament comes in this rather unassuming brown box um, and it's 500 grams I think it was about 15 pounds 500 grams so like 30 pounds for a kilogram which is about twice which is I paid more for the chrome filament than I did for half a kilogram than I did for a full kilogram of the white filament but as you can see it makes a good job like that's not the best because that still needs a bit of fixing because of how I printed it like you can see like from the bumper and the grill it all looks reasonably good so the the wings, they're actually um, a swept extrude. So I um, basically, on SolidWorks, I made a um, extension for each wheel, um, like a vector circle. Um, it, it went each wheel is, and then I copied onto a new sketch, drew the front section, swept extruded it, then made like a square bit here where the um, the running board is, and then filleted out the edges. So they're actually slightly thinner there, you might be able to see. They sort of sweep, it gives a very nice front. So that's I think um, 45 degrees or something from the centre of the wheel. Um, then I've got this other chrome plate mounted on the top because this is actually printed in three sections. But, um, so you've got the back section which bolts on onto the main bit of the chassis. Then you've got a plate in the middle and you've got a small section You've got another bit which bolts onto the chassis in a different manner, and it all joins through like a this thing, and it's glued, this hot glued, then super glued as well. So also I underneath the chassis is in three sections. So you've got the main section in the centre, which all the bodywork mounts onto, and you've got this back section here. So this piece has the rear axle mounting. Um, as you can see where the prop shaft goes, they've all got um, curves mounted into them. Um, and the front section where the front end suspension all mounts on, so they're basically subframes. Where well, the front is very, is all the subframes, all the front suspension comes out with currently three bolts because some placement issues. Um, the back is glued onto a plate here, the rear springs, because I never, I didn't quite know which springs I was going to use when I designed it. So here there is, and you might be able to see here, um, that the, the um, one part of the prop shaft you just to catch on the body, so I sort of um, use a knife to just cut out some of the plastic there. So this is the bonnet strap. So this basically just bolts on here. This is one of the bonnet half bolts. So the bonnet, as you can see here, this is one side. So this bit doesn't move and it's got a nice these vents in it. If I move over, turn this car around without dropping it on the table. So it has this strap with a very nice style on it. And the bonnet opens. So then we can get a look at the suspension if the bonnet's going to stay open. It doesn't have a bonnet stay. So these are Lego Technic motorbike shock absorbers. Um, and then these are just sort of generic Lego Technic shocks. So it's actually got four, it's actually got double front suspension because it wasn't quite hard enough. The batch when the battery is in it basically just collapsed. Now it's just got a normal nine ground servo, which are like ten pounds for ten or something ridiculous. So some of these bits like here, they're a bit bodged, they're not finished. But at the front of the car, there is um, obviously two lights, so they're actually 3D printed lenses, just out of some old semi clear filament I had. Then obviously all this is chrome. So I think I paid £2.50 for 52mm by 25 bolt. So all the finer details, as you can see, are all held on with them. So obviously the rear light lens as well. The boot lid here opens, obviously, hinged. And then you have the receiver under there. So that, that has two extension cables. So parts of the interior are still not actually finished yet. Um, so this is going to, I'm going to laser cut a wooden piece which will go on there. Uh, and then the steering wheel will mount on as well. Um, <laughs> get the half shaft out there. And also this door, we had to filler it slightly. So quite a lot of the body actually has filler on it, a very thin layer to get rid of the layer height. Because I'm obviously layout 3D printing isn't the um, best. So, like this bit here, that's all. This bit here, that's all non 
filler. So this is just a couple of layers of primer, sanded down with wet and dry paper. So the front wheels, they're mounted slightly differently to the back wheels. They're using a Meccano bolt. Then there's a, um, a bush in the wheel, which runs onto the bolt, which is almost perfectly sized. Then you've got like a lock nut and a washer. These wheels are still a bit wrong because they have a tendency to wobble at low speed, which um, kind of makes the car a tad unstable. But once you get up to the high speed, it does fix the problem. So yeah, that's pretty much all the bodywork talked about. Right, so we're out with the... Um the car today. Nice weather actually. Unfortunately it seems to be struggling with slopes quite a lot. So it doesn't have quite enough grip on the back end as I've said before. It's because all the weight's in the front, all the resistance on the front end. That's not particularly brilliant. So there definitely are going to have to be modifications, maybe to the rear suspension, but also to the way the weight is aligned. I'm thinking about maybe adding like a heavier weight, a heavy weight under the back seat, so um, there's a bit more weight on the back end. So we have almost instant power on tap. So you can see the wheels will spin instantly. But the problem is it just doesn't have enough um, traction on normal terrain, not to um, just um, go absolutely m m mental. One problem is at the moment, when the steering gets too reasonably close to full lock, if it begins to, to slide over, you see, the, because the um, the axle is actually not levelled out on the, 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 basically, there's an issue with the swing arms, which um, means the axle slightly tilted forward, so as it turns, the wheels begin to dig over, which obviously creates a lot of resistance. If you remember, I'd mentioned this doesn't have a panard rod for the front and rear axles, and I am noticing this had it's suffering from what's called tramping, where the axle is basically twisting back and forth um, as it bounces. As you floor it, basically as it hits a bump, the axle twists, and you sort of get like a doo -doo -doo, sort of goes all over the place, which is not the ideal. On a smooth bit of road, you can really get some speed up. The long hill is so bumpy. So there is one problem, is that initially when I designed the front, when I did build this front axle, I um, made it so it was solid, the steering paper clip, but then it bent the servo, or broke the servo gears. So I've made a kink in it now, see here, 
And the point is though, that if you hit a big bump, it, um, how do you say, it bends it. This heat sink here, wait, let me turn this upside down. Heat sink is actually really hot, but it's keeping the motor from moving. Right, let's continue onwards. I haven't got that quite right. Trim it out a bit. That's fair. The problem is, it kind of can slap because obviously the roads are all a bit half all slanted. And so the back end being light means it sort of tries to overtake the front end when you hit the, when you hit the throttle. It's not the most ideal situation, but oh, this thing's not finished yet. Oh god! Do I say this is now done? maybe five or six miles without any part changes. We've had a few bodges, the motor gear was slipping, um, and I've taken the actual pieces a couple of times and put it back together in the same way it was. But that's simply because, um, just to check it was still all greased. So it's been to pieces probably five times but hadn't had a part change. So that wraps up the video really, um, we managed to get back okay, everything still seems to be on the working side, this um, joint here is beginning to wear I think, um, not too badly but you can just feel it's starting to move a bit too much, but everything else is working nicely, so I suppose there will be an update video at some point um, to this project. I've still got all the problems sorted out if that ever happens. So my next project is either going to be a helicopter, and uh, surprising, or um, another one of these, if depending on the time scale. So see you in the next video.